What is up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mug. Welcome to my part two, the final installment of our How to Paint War Commander Sorsha for the Kador Army and the War Machine game. Specifically, this figure is the one that comes in the starter set for War Machine. And boy, oh boy, what a fun model to paint. These are the colors you're going to be using. Games Workshop's Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, Wild Rider Red, Dark Reaper, Russ Gray, Known Oil, Celestra Gray, Ulthuan Gray, Lead Belcher, Cadian Flesh Tone, Kislev Flesh, this is the uh, Dark Flesh, this is the custom skin recipe, Ivory, Ordic Olive and Umbral Umber. And this is the final effect you're gonna get. What I really tried to go for was making some good highlights on the robes. This is one of my better paint jobs. I think the the flow of the robes, I was able to get some really, really clean, good highlights on it. Just check out the front. I'm really, really happy with it. So, okay, this is where we should have ended up after our last episode. Um, the, the model is shaded. It's uh, all the colors are tied together with our Rhinox Hide Shade. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to try to get all of these uh, red bits highlighted. So we're using our Mephiston Red here. And we're going to try to paint on the innermost areas of all the shaded parts. So we, we're going to try to avoid the areas that are uh, n near folds in the cloth. I want to just get the upper areas like the collar, the, the flip, the upturned part. Um, anywhere where you see the light catching off of the model, we want to leave the shade, the shading and the recesses and, and everything down there. And uh, yeah, that's basically how I'm going to be doing all of the red areas of the model. Again, if you are interested in having my original tutorial music playing in the background, I'm going to post up a link in the description. Just click on that and it'll take you to another video that does a special playlist of all of my tutorial music so you can have that going in the back. All right, and here we're going with the collar in the front there. And I am using a Rosemary and Company brush, beautiful brush, great tip. It helps me to really get into all of the detailed areas here. Okay, when painting the breastuses on the corset, I'm starting uh, this new kind of technique where I'm pulling the light towards the center and um, leaving sh shade <laughs> shades, shadows, in the upper and outer and uh, underneath area of where her breasts fall on the corset. So it's kind of like if you remember the old um, Madonna cone bra music videos, I'm trying to do that where I taper the uh, highlights towards points near the front there. It'll make more sense once you're uh, once once we get to like the second and third highlight. And if you're a 13 year old boy and you're giggling a lot that that I'm talking about that, then um, awesome, awesome for you. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to do a very scientific and clinical approach on how to paint breasts, and uh, people just don't take me seriously. Okay, when we get towards the corset, because corsets are long, we're trying to accentuate the lines. I'm really focusing on vertical lines. I'm not doing horizontal brush strokes and I'm flaring it out at the bottom. This is, creates a nice optical illusion that uh, when we make our brush strokes a little bit fatter towards the bottom, we start with very thin lines near the center by uh, right under her breasts and then pull it out into fatter, broader strokes at the bottom as it gets towards her hips. That creates the illusion of the material stretching and spreading out and uh, makes a nice hourglass kind of optical illusion. Very clinical, the female form. So many curves and lines. Okay, this is what I call the, the Isabella method because I'm kind of doing what I did for the Isabella von Karstein model. When you've got a model that has a nice, long, flowy area in the front, like her tabard there, the little part that hangs down the front, you really try to build up um, th three long lines in different areas. So I'm going to leave shadows between those three lines, but 
if you have three, that really draws the eye. I think three is a nice magic number. So you can see that I'm really doing uh, three flaps of cloth. And I'm going to be focusing on those three and then building a little bit more color in, in, in the different areas. So we're going to be highlighting those folds and um, just building up the colors on those and leaving the Rhinox Hide shade or glaze in, in the other areas. And we're doing the same thing back here. This is a little bit, do you see all the flaps on the, the back of her, her coat thing, her skirt? They're very wide and broad. If, if, we're, if you compress all that, then you get the front of her uh, little little coat piece that hangs down in front of her crotch area that is where um, we are, we're gonna really pull in the the detailed lighting highlighting so long vertical breast strokes I mean, if the sunrise is really such a great color if the the pots were built a little bit better or if games workshop used a, a dropper system then um, I wouldn't have to keep buying them because every time I open one it dries out for some reason Okay, so you can see the shape of her buttocks there, her boom boom, and um, that's just a sculpt in the model. So when, when you shade that area, there it creates a nice natural line, and that means that we want we want to do the reverse and we want to highlight it. So that's how we're gonna do it. We're going to build the highlights up by focusing on the the bump and the swell of her boom boom, and uh, leaving some shading underneath there and then drawing the color back up towards the bottom. And we're doing the same thing with the shoulder pads and the, I guess you would call it the, um, her jacket. It's not really a jacket. There's no sleeves though. It's like her, it's like a stole. I think I called it a stole in the last one. It just kind of drapes over her shoulders. And I think this is actually one of my really my better and my cleaner highlighting jobs. So if if you want to see a model highlighted up to like as 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 high as it can go, then this is this is a, a video that I think will really really help. Evil Sun Scarlet, uh, you you can kind of tell there's a hard cut there because what I did was I let the model dry and then I added a second Mephiston Red coat. So you're really building up off of two or three coats, and um, that's where you get the cleanest highlights. If you really build up the colors with multiple thin layers, then you're really going to be able to see the, um, the progress, and uh, the, the blend is going to look so much smoother. So thin down your paints, use less than you need, but paint on multiple thin layers. That's the secret to uh, good painting, good paint jobs, I think. So as you can see, I'm trying to build a sense of movement in the paint strokes, and uh, I'm really trying to trying to focus on where the light would be hitting. <laughs> like here, I'm I'm painting the upper area and the swell of her her boom boom, and uh, just kind of not touching the center or underneath. If you can kind of see, there's almost like a a shadow cross looks like uh, a T. Where <laughs> this is so wrong. Um, I should bring Lewis into this guy. Lewis, ah! can you describe what I'm trying to do with the painting the butt cheeks here? All right, Warbosh Tay is basically saying that you want to accentuate highlights and create the illusion of depth by leaving the lower and more darker color in the recesses under the swell of the boom boom and between the boom boom cheeks. All right. Uh, thank you, Lewis. That was that's much more eloquent than I would have uh, thought you to be. Ah, just because I'm a dirty old man that likes to hit on young women at the clubs, especially those of more exotic ethnicities, what makes you think that I can't explain color theory? Uh, nothing. I guess you can't really judge a book by its cover. That's right. Speaking of books, if you'll excuse me, I am going to go to the bookstore now and pick up my dirty magazines.
Lewis, you have a problem. All right. Back to business. We're going to move on. Balthazar Gold. Stepping away from the uh, reds, we're going to wait for the, the uh, again, I'm, I'm, I did two coats of that. Uh, Evil Sun Scarlet. So we're really building up those red colors. With the Balthazar Gold, I'm going to repaint the half of the of her hammer because um, most of the artwork and pictures I saw have the this entire part painted gold. I guess it's a status symbol, which is fine. Um, it's something I should have looked at before I painted it in part one, but that's all right. So yeah, the whole area is going to get this nice Balthazar Gold color. Now we're going to do Abaddon Black. This is going to be for the uh, handle area of the hammer. Oh yeah, that's another trick that I, I like to do. If, I, if I'm using black, and uh, most of the times before I'm done painting the model, or I'm done basing the model when I finish, I will um, want to paint the entire base black. So if you find you have too much, there's no need to wipe that excess black off on your wet palette. You can just use the, the base, which is what I do. Just wipe off some of that extra black paint on your base. All right. Such a small area of the model, but really one that your your viewers are going to be looking at almost immediately when they pick up your model. It's going to be one of the first things they see is the face. So we are going to build up our facial colors or the skin color for our, our girl here using the uh, female skin recipe that I've shown off in the past. So that's a mixture of Cadian Flesh Tone, Kislev Flesh, Dark Flesh, and Ivory from Vallejo and just a very, very little bit of umbral, umber, and ordic olive. So because we shaded, or um, we, we've been highlighting, and we shaded with a, oh, excuse me, with a glaze of that color, we're bringing up the highlights. And by doing that, we were adding in ivory. We're adding in a little bit of Kislev flesh and Cadian flesh tone to keep that peachy color, but uh, we are building the color back up by lightening it. Uh, ideally, most painters will, especially um, beginner painters that, that have all the different colors of paints and stuff, will want to just switch between colors. And that's, that's what I've done for my tutorials for most of my time here on YouTube. But if you want really clean transitions, you should just take one color, in my case, the that flesh mixture of the six different paints, and highlight that same color by adding in a lighter color, like ivory. And you go with ivory or something that's a bone color instead of just straight white, because if you add straight white to red, you get pink. But if you add straight white, or, or if you add like a bone color, then you get like a highlighted red color. It's still red, it doesn't change the, the properties of the color, but now it, it looks a little bit different. So the same goes true for any skin tone. And the sculpt is so good. Really, I, I um, get down on Privateer Press for all of the mold lines and the, uh, the, um, the difficult like flash points on the model. I guess it's not a flash, it's all mold lines. There's, so many terrible mold lines but the sculpt of the actual model like the way her head is turned you can see her her neck kind of straining and um, the proportions of the face the way the the face angles down towards the chin tapers to a point at the chin and creates a very nice uh, look it's a shame that her hand is up like that because uh, you can't really see it on camera you could see it a little bit better if her hand wasn't right there in front of her face so we're just going to keep highlighting using this color and um, if if you want, add a little bit more ivory and keep highlighting. Pull the points up towards the nose. The highest places of color should be the nose and the top of the cheekbones and then um, right on the jawline to accentuate the shape of her face. So that's what the model will look like at the end of your skin 
um, painting. So now we're going to go to the highest color of red. And uh, I'm actually building up to an orange, which is why I'm, I'm not adding in bone colors like I think I did with Isabella. For, for our girl here, we're adding, um, what is this, Wild Rider Red, which is a very orangey kind of red, and that's the final tone, so we're really going to be focusing on the highest, highest areas on the um, raised, most raised areas that would pick up the light. And that's where we're going to be painting this. So on her armor plates, stick to the edges and leave some of that darker shade up near the top. For the cloth, we're going to um, really stick to the folds. You see those three, um, those three areas on the front of her tabard there. You can really tell uh, because of the way the highlights and the shades have kind of worked on the model. You can really see like a sense of movement. And I love that about, about painting. It's like we're creating an optical illusion and uh, the illusion of texture on a model that is, you know, completely flat. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to be kind of working backwards. I'm, I'm adding the orange color to that wide area of her, of her dress, the lower part of her great coat, and I'm going to shade it back down. I'm going to color it down with some Evil Sun Scarlet in a second, but I just want to see like where are the highlights really going to go? And so I'm adding it on more areas than I need to, which you can. It's, it's really up to you. How broad do you want your highlights to be? How striking and how bright? Uh, for me personally, I think that is a little too much orange. So I'm going back down with uh, Evil Sun Scarlet right here. And I am just tying in the colors. And uh, I continue to work on the model here and just building building that color up using ever more Wild Rider Red to uh, focus on the edges and the flaps and the folds of where they are the most. So, yeah, there's there's not really much to say other than I'm, I'm basically going over all of the areas I've gone previously over and just building up the colors steadily. So there, that just looks so good. And the red is done. With that, if you want to, you can add a blood letter glaze to um, just to tie in all the colors. But I, I love the way that it goes down into that, that dark brown. If you add a glaze, it might uh, muddy the darker areas. And um, I think the, the, the transition between colors is just so good. Okay, so now we're going on to Dark Reaper. What we're going to be doing is highlighting up all of the black areas. And... It's about this time of the day when I was shooting that there was a lot of natural light coming from behind me. There are some windows in the garage that at a certain time of day, like right around sunset, it just shines right through and it kind of threw off my my whole lighting situation. So I thought, oh, that's weird. I'm just going to keep going. Um, but if, if it gets a little wonky, then that's that's why. Okay, so the Dark Reaper, I'm um, doing the same thing I did with the red. I'm building up the colors and the flatter areas and the raised areas. So I'm, I'm doing the trim. I uh, kicked a little bit into the boots. Ha! Pun. And I did the inside lining of her of her great coat. But yeah, when doing the trim, kind of sticking to the top where the light would naturally hit that, that fur trim. Um, and not painting into the recesses. You don't want to get the paint too much in there. You want to just, it's almost a light brush. It's a little bit heavier than a, a, light, a dry brush, rather. Now we're doing straight lines once once you get to the flatter areas. You can be a little bit random with the textured stuff, like the fur trim, but uh, you do want to have nice, straight, uh, consistent lines for areas like the glove and um, the inside lining of the great coat. We're also hitting up the symbols on your shoulders, so that's good. And she's got a little leather belt so we're gonna paint that in black okay and she's got inner lining of her of her uh, her cape as well And I'm also hitting up her hair. So you can see we're being consistent, even though her gauntlet is a different material from the 
the fur trim, which is a different material from the inner lining of her great coat, which is a different texture and material from her hair, if we keep the same colors, then it creates a very consistent look for our model. So because her hair is jet black, just like her boots, just like the inner lining of her clothes, um, we are going to highlight her hair the same way as we would the fur trim the and all the other areas. So you can tell when I'm painting on these highlights here, I'm really sticking to the highlights I've already done. You don't have to make new highlights. You want to just build on the areas you've already done. Pulling towards the edges here. That's generally how I highlight. I pull towards the edges. Pull the paint down towards the, the ends or um, really accentuate the fingertips or the um, the curve of the shoulder blade or, or the elbow pad rather um, just pull towards the edges because the edges of your of your models parts and textures and pieces are what's going to be the most striking it's what's going to catch the eye the most so that's what we want to focus on All right, and we are nearing the end of this tutorial. I just want to say that this was a fun, fun project to work on. It's the War Machine uh, two-player box set. I had a great time. I'm working on a lot of other stuff in between, and uh, I just wanted to be consistent with the videos. So now what we're doing is we're going to hit up her hat, highlight her hat up with Othwan Gray. Um, but yeah, if you would like to commission my studio, then please do. My website is warbostastudios.com, all one word, warbostastudios.com. Or you can email me, warbostastudios at gmail.com. You can also uh, find me on Facebook and Twitter at warbostay. Hey. And yeah, just let me know if you're interested in booking some work with my commission studio. Spooky Toberfest is coming up, so we have a lot more cool videos to show off. And I'm doing a lot of product reviews for things that I have been getting into recently. So uh, stay tuned for those. Those are going to be a lot of fun. And um, yeah, there's hopefully I'm, I'm still working out the kinks and finding the balance between all of the different areas of my business and my social media presence and here on YouTube and everything and trying to make it all gel. And um, I, I find it a lot of fun. It's a little frustrating sometimes trying to trying to squeeze out more time than you have hours in the day but uh, i look forward to it and i love the interaction between me and the community and all of all of the people that watch my my videos my viewers and my subscribers so continue hitting the like button leaving me a comment i'm sorry if i don't respond immediately i'm still trudging through all the comments that i've i've gotten over the last couple of months and trying to answer any questions but um continue to get in contact with me and leave comments and um, join the Google community too, Warboss Tay's 2015 painting community. Ooh, getting towards the end of the year. I'm going to have to um, change the name of that soon. But uh, I'd love to have you. I'd love to see your work there. Basically, what we're doing now while I'm talking is we're just building up the colors to our hat. I started with Othwan Gray, and then I painted on a little bit of Celestia Gray. And now what I'm doing is just taking known oil and painting it on the hat to tie in those those gray colors. But yeah, post up any of your work on the Warboss Tay's 2015 painting community. It's on Google+. You can search for it and find it there. And uh, I'd love to see all of your work, anything that you guys are working on, especially if uh, you've been out of the hobby or you're just getting back into the hobby and you need a little bit of motivation. It's a great community we have, and um, I, I look forward to seeing all of your stuff there. Okay, so now that that plug is over with, Shameless plug is over with. We are, the very last step we're going to do is we're going to paint on some metal accents, some silver accents to our model. So uh, I'm, first things first, cleaning up any of the silver pieces that got a, may have gotten a little bit of shade or wash or, or red color or any, any kind of color onto it. So that's the hammerhead. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to be painting on all of the studs on her gauntlets. So I'm working on her right gauntlet right now. She's got a couple of studs there on 
her forearm bracer. She's also got that backpack is all in silver, so you can, if, if you got any uh, bleed over or spill over from red paint, you can repaint that. She's also got some studs on her left bracer. So we're gonna paint those in right now. Basically, after you're done painting a model, one, one thing I do suggest is go away from, from it for a while. Um, sleep on it, take the night off, do something else, get into something else, come back to the model after about you know six to eight, maybe even 24 hours, and then look at the model again and you will be amazed at how many mistakes you missed because you are so focused on painting one or two things and working step by step. Uh, really, it, it helps to have that, that clarity and that time away. So here is our finished model. And um, basically what I'm doing now is I'm just showing you some, uh, some final touches that I'm doing. She's got some studs on her front armor plates there. You know what's funny is that my uh, lady boss, after I finished filming this, she went back and she told me her face looks like it needs a little bit more highlighting. So you, you'll see it in the wrap up video. It looks a little bit better. Anyways, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video and have a great day.